I've got a new package. There's another one. Cut away. I'll get there eventually. There we go. Ta da! Nice little letter, got the instruction manual, which we'll take a look at later, or I will look at. You guys probably aren't that interested in it. And the phone thing, and there is the microphone. Ah, oh, it looks really nice. It's got the Five Fine logo at the front. It's got a nice kind of angular design compared to the other one, which was a lot rounder. There's the gain here, headphone jack here. There's a mute button down here. And at the bottom, there is a USB-B port instead of USB-C or USB micro, USB-B. So it's the kind of things you use for printer cables, MIDI controllers. People like me, musicians, have these lying around everywhere. So I like that. There's also another kind of kind of mystery box here. Don't know what's gonna be in it. I'm, I guess it's gonna be like the stand, huh? Nice. So the first thing I notice is that there is a nice little pop filter grill thing. A USB-B cable to USB-C, thank you, or USB-A for those of you that haven't transitioned yet. It's 2021, get on it. I'm just kidding. I love USB-A. Uh, what's this? Ooh, it's kind of heavy. It's not very light at all, as I expected from the pictures. It's very strong feeling. Extends out like that. And also included is a little 3 8 to 5 8 converter for those of you that have the smaller microphone stands. Hey guys, this is DID Choi. Welcome back to the channel. You're listening to the 5 Fine 638 with processing right now. So just like last time when I reviewed a 5 Fine microphone, they sent me the microphone for free, but no other money exchanged hands. And I can tell you whatever I want about the microphone. Okay, let me grab the microphone. I'm guessing the front is the side with the logo on it. Or is it? Okay, so it looks like this screw is going to make this go down, up and down. It's a very nice matte black finish, no scratches on it this time like there were last time, but yeah. So it's looking really good. I am noticing that it is a bit of a hot day, so my fingerprints are getting right on it. If you want to make it look clean, I guess, try not to touch it too much. Okay, let me add the stand. It's always easier to fold it and then put it in moving the stand itself rather than the microphone because then if you have the microphone flying around everywhere that's just a mess. Sets up like that. Okay, how does this go on? I'm going to actually read the manual for a second. So looking at the manual it looks like the side with the logo on it is indeed the front and there's this little rubber tab here. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe I'll do any b-roll if you can't but you basically pull out this tab and put it over the microphone. So the backside will be actually touching the grill of the microphone, but I guess that's okay. Check out the cable. Here you can see at the end, it's got a USB-A versus USB-C. So I guess the A is the main section, while the C is kind of like an auxiliary thing. But anyways, I'll only be using the USB-C for most of my work, so that's cool. But it's also nice to have this, so I don't have to go and look for an adapter. So this basically just plugs into the bottom here. It's nice and snug, and this part would go into the computer. Okay, now that we've unboxed this, let's go back and see when I first tried out this microphone at work. All right, so I'm currently at work right now, uh, working at the VSO School of Music. Right now we have a big band in the Pyatt Hall. Actually, let's take a look. So I'm behind the camera right now, but the microphone is still right in front of me. And you can see I have the camera views of the Jazz Fest. On the other side of the glass are the actual people. I'm wondering how much of the band you can actually hear. 
the glass is not fully closed because there's some wires going through it and if I mute the actual feed there's what you can actually hear and then when I'm actually working right now they're just warming up I would bring them up so I'm gonna guess I'm quite quiet now yeah but here's just one test of the microphone I just looked at the footage and as you saw, the cardioid pattern was actually quite directional and it was very good at rejecting the speakers where the sound is coming from and the glass where there's a little bit of a break so you can hear the bleed through. It's actually doing a very good job of cancelling that and just picking up my voice. So I'm pretty impressed. So that's really good for when you're in noisy spaces. Maybe you're doing a podcast at a cafe for some reason or something like that, you know? Or maybe your room isn't so treated so you just need to be close to your microphone and have a nice directional pattern. So in that vein, who is this microphone for? This microphone is basically for probably number one streaming. So streamers on Twitch and stuff like that, video games. Uh, I, I actually don't really watch any Twitch, so I don't know what happens there. But I know that a lot of people there use USB microphones so they can connect right to the computer and whether they're screen sharing their game or they're just talking to their audience through their cameras, a USB microphone is very convenient for that because you don't need an audio interface, you don't need XLR cables and stuff, you can just grab this. Similarly, podcasters will enjoy this microphone because it has a really nice sound, it has a pop filter built in so I can't go uh, actually, that was the first time I was testing out the plosives. And, you know, unless you're going really close to it and really just going for it with a p For regular talking, it won't really be picking up your plosives. So as long as you're talking maybe like, what is this, like three inches from the microphone. For a podcaster, this will be very easy to use. Similarly, YouTubers that are doing kind of more like a voiceover stuff, maybe they're doing tutorials or, or talking or teaching about stuff. YouTubers or teachers, business people on Zoom calls, anyone who still needs to use Zoom for remote work these days, or even anyone doing ASMR channels. Who's it not for though? I would say uh, people like musicians who need really high quality audio with like a wide frequency range. Uh, maybe this microphone isn't for you, especially since you're going to be using audio interfaces and higher end gear and you know you want every part of your setup to be really streamlined and you know reliable and very high quality. Also, you can't really use this microphone for on the run stuff, so you can't plug it into like a Zoom recorder or something, or an external recorder. You gotta have your computer with you, which means, you know, if you're just vlogging, then maybe this isn't the best microphone for you, unless you're in your studio, like me right now. Similarly, professional voiceover artists probably won't need this microphone because while it does have a nice pop filter and nice proximity effect, uh, you probably don't want to have a limited range of frequency response for your voiceover, especially because you want the highest quality. You know, even though this sounds really good, maybe it's just not up to the standard of your Neumann microphones, for example. Okay, so now for a quick plosive test. Right now with the pop filter, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now I'm going to remove the pop filter and we'll see ex exactly how effective this thing actually is. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. All right, and handling noise, the last microphone had the stand built into it. So even when it was mounted or something, there was a lot of handling noise. Let's test this one out. Touching the mic stand, you can, I think you can hear that pretty well, actually. What if I touch the pop filter? Yeah, even louder. And the actual body, if I were to touch the knobs, Yeah, again, so there is a lot of handling noise. So for this microphone, just like the Fifines K678, you probably want to set it at the beginning and don't touch it during whatever you're doing. Okay, so now I'm gonna test out the proximity effect. As you guys know, for a cardioid microphone, if you move closer to the microphone, the bass frequencies of your voice will be accentuated. And when you're farther from the microphone, those frequencies will be tamed a little. So I'm just gonna play some white noise, which is basically equal frequencies throughout the whole band on my Bluetooth speaker, which is definitely not equal frequency throughout the whole band, but we can get an idea. I'll show you the fast Fourier transform of the white noise as I move it closer and farther from the microphone.
kind of sounds like waves, doesn't it? Now a couple comments on the build and the mic stand and the hardware itself comes with this little microphone stand, which is really handy because rubber feet, but the rest is all metal. It's pretty hefty, like I mentioned in the unboxing, more than it looks, although it's not like heavy, heavy or anything. It's just solid feeling. It kind of snaps out and it has a 5 8 screw adapter right here. So not only can you use it for this microphone, I can also use it for things like the SM58 or any other like real microphones that are usually adapted onto mic stands. So for example, if I take one of these, which is from a Shure microphone, I can literally just put it onto the stand, I take it into the 5 8 connector here and turn, which means you can have a nice tabletop stand with whatever you really want, as long as it's not way too heavy for the stand. But most microphones aren't that heavy, so I think it'll be able to support just about anything, including this, obviously. Also included with the microphone, like I mentioned in the unboxing, is the 3 8 to 5 8 adapter. So for those of you who are not using this stand and instead have something like a tabletop podcaster kind of stand, right now I already have an adapter on this, but these are usually 3 8 And also things like camera gear, uh, tripods like this Gorilla Pod. The tip here for tripods and stuff like that are often going to be 3 8 Or you can add adapters to change the quarter inch ones to 3 8 and then add this on top, you know, double adapter it, and adapt it to use as a stand for this microphone. The microphone itself feels like a high quality plastic or maybe metal, I'm not really sure. It's very light, I don't want to really touch it right now while I'm recording, but yeah, it includes a gain knob on my side right now, which I can turn and get louder, 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 louder. ASMR stuff. And when I turn it down, it goes to no sound at all, unlike the K678, which basically just had clean gain coming in. This one totally goes to negative infinity, so you'll have no sound at all. Similarly, there is a mute button. So right now you're just hearing the Rode Video Micro on my camera right now, and it probably sounds terrible because it's very far away from me. But if I turn the mute button back on, now the audio is crystal clear and it sounds great. Uh, very direct because it's closer to my mouth and you get less of the room sound. Uh, get out of the way. And finally, as you can see, I'm using right now, there is a headphone jack in the back and there is no volume knob on the microphone itself. But that means because this is kind of acting like an audio interface, I can control the volume of my headphones and what I'm hearing through the computer that I'm recording on right now. So if you are playing games or browsing videos on YouTube, you can plug right into here instead of your computer itself and you can get some low latency monitoring along with your own voice and you can hear exactly what you're streaming or podcasting or whatever it is you're doing. So the frequency response of this microphone is a little smaller than the other K678 and it is going from 50 Hertz to 17 kilohertz which is gonna be less than a Rode NT1A or my AT2020 or the other 5 by microphone, which went from 40 to 20 kilohertz, I believe. But the range is actually still more than an SM58. So it's totally fine for basic vocal work. You just don't have quite as much details above 17K, which actually most adults can't even hear. And most of the time we cut out everything under 100 hertz because that's all low end rumble and handling noise and stuff. So. Yeah, 50 to 17 kilohertz is actually totally perfect for the voice. Now, in the manual of this microphone, I did not see a recommended distance like the other 5.5 microphone, but you know, it's like any other microphone that you use. The closer you are, the more direct sound you're going to get. The farther you are, the more the signal to noise ratio is going to be smaller, so you're going to hear more of the room sounds. If I have something else like a fan or AC on or something like that, you're going to hear a lot of that. While if I'm really close, you're going to hear more of my voice versus anything else. So we're going to do another test right now and I'm going to turn on the fan next to me because it's really hot in here. I have my fan turned on to its first level. You can probably hear it, right? And especially if I talk from here and turn the gain up a little bit, you can definitely hear it over my voice or kind of like underneath my voice. But if I turn the gain down and move closer to the microphone, uh, in this case, uh, you can probably still hear it a little bit, but it's not as big of an issue and you can hear my voice a lot more clearly. And now I'm going to denoise it and continue talking over it. So the denoise software I'm using is Isotope RX8 now, just using the spectral denoise module. How is it working? Is it sounding really artifacty or is the sound of the fan basically gone and you can only hear my voice? I'm very curious to hear. 
and another test on the same vein. Uh, we're going to do a noise floor test. So I'm basically going to crank the gain up and be as quiet as possible. And you can listen to whatever rumble is going on in my room. I don't think there's any construction near me. So right now it should be fairly quiet. Maybe the refrigerator in the kitchen. And then you can hear the self noise of the microphone as well. Yeah, that just sounds like noise. It's definitely going to be noisier than something like a Rode NT1A, but you know, you're never going to be really using it at that level. You shouldn't really be because you're probably going to be distorting your voice. If you're talking from really far away or making something from far away, I guess you will be picking up a lot of that noise and hopefully getting something like Isotope RX can help with that. You know, just getting like the most basic version. I think it's Isotope RX Elements which is for like $29 if you get it on sale or something. And you can use the voice denoise module in that. Okay, maybe some of you guys skipped all the way to this point of the video. Uh, if you did, you know, whatever. But now we're finally going to do the tests. Again, uh, just like last time, I'm going to let you know I'm not a voiceover artist at all. I'm not a singer. Uh, but I will show you what I can do with a microphone, playing guitar a bit. So don't judge. Please. I have brought peace, freedom, justice, and security to my new empire. Your new empire? Don't make me kill you. Anakin, my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy. That was pretty bad. It works though. For this guitar test, I'm a little bit farther away from the microphone, uh, from my mouth, so that it has a little bit more of a level between my voice and the guitar sound itself. Let's see how this sounds. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but This actually got me into UBC University singing, so hope it sounded okay. Okay, so there you have it. Those were the examples. I hope they helped you. I hope you got a good feel for what this microphone sounds like and if the microphone will be worth it for you to buy. Ah, I forgot to mention what the price of this was for the whole video. Uh, this microphone is between $50 and $70 depending on what country you're in and when you get it. So it is a very affordable microphone. And for the price, you are getting something that is really usable, very portable. You get a pop filter, you get a mic stand adapter, you get a bunch of different things. So. I, I would definitely recommend it for you if you're on a budget. It's going to be great for podcasters, streamers, anyone that still needs a Zoom call. Uh, so yeah, definitely follow the links below and buy the microphone. It will be supporting the channel, but uh, no extra fee to you. Affiliate links. If you like this video, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about the microphone. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, ding the notification bell, all that if you feel like it. This has been DID Choi and I'll see you in the next one.